Hey guys, this is NHSTL6. Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. Now, time to find out a little bit about what's been behind King Batu and his strange actions. Necessary for them to restate that, but whatever. Okay. Oh, yes. A grand nuisance. I said, incest, guys, here it is. Not only is it just incest, but it's incest to revive a dark lord, huh? Gross. Gross. Hardships, huh? I don't know if that's a first world problem or not. Alright. That's Sandima. One nasty dude. But, we've got something else on our hands right now. Prince Yamka there in the middle is surrounded by all those axe fighters, and as you can see, he's an enemy right now. So. We need to figure out how to get him on our side, and I know just the trick. Now, this part of the chapter is kind of annoying because uh, there really isn't a lot that you can do in terms of movement. You're going to be heading into these forests, which this this clearing didn't exist before, right here. Prior to that, those lighter green trees were all connected together, so you couldn't really get through to them. The problem here is that they've opened up and it leaves you a choke point, which is nice, but moving through the forest is super difficult. You can only move, I think, I think your movement is cut almost in half for each of your units, and the unit that you need in order to recruit Yamka, if you remember earlier, is Aideen. She was the one who he saved, and so she's the one who's going to snap him back to reality to join our side, and so you have to find a way to get uh, Lady Ideen all the way up here without being killed by Yamka. So that's our task today. There's actually quite a bit that's going to happen in this episode, so this should be an interesting one. This just takes forever, that's the only bad part. And it's not terribly interesting waiting for all of these guys to do this. But they'll get to you soon enough. Now I recommend leading your offensive with Ira for a couple reasons. One, Ira is a good unit forthright in her own regard. She's just a good person to use. But she's got super high evasion, and in these trees, that's going to become super useful to recruit Yamka. Because he has a killer bow, which has the critical status and can kill you if you're not careful. So you should most certainly be careful. I don't. Yeah, I don't really have anyone that needs healing at this point. I know I, should, I said you should be healing on every turn, but it's not really necessary at this point. So I'm going to try to be working Ira up into that choke point. So hopefully I can cut off 
these brigands. I know that they're going to get there before I will. But we should be able to get there soon enough that we can cut them off from getting any closer with some ranged attacks. And then Yamka is just going to continue to trudge his way down through the forest over there. They're going to come after her immediately, which is fine, because they can't really do much to us anyway. So this is just going to be a bit of a, a slog because of how little I can move. It sucks a bit. But interesting things will happen after this, so that's something to look forward to. I'm just going to keep trying to move Ideen closer and closer. She's the one... No, I don't want to use any of her staves. She's the one who can recruit Yamka after all. We do have a little bit of time to get her up there. My plan is to have Ira stand guard for as long as she can. These guys will barely be able to hit her if they even can. So I'm going to have... Yeah, 1%. I'm going to have... And she just used Astro. That's awesome. So uh, I'm going to have her block the choke point as long as possible. And then as soon as things are in good shape, I'm going to move her up, have Ideen as close to possible next to her, and then I'll do a kind of a drop and swap and drop. I mean, it's not technically a swap and drop because you can't pick people up in this game, but I'm just going to have her essentially have Ira move out of the way, Ideen switch places with her, and then we'll recruit Prince Yamka on that turn. And actually, it's kind of nice that Ira isn't killing all of these guys. If she was killing all these guys, that would pose a bit of a problem for us. Mainly because of the fact that um, we can't really form a choke point if she's killing everybody. Because there's just going to be a person who's going to take her spot in the choke point as soon as she moves. And that would be kind of annoying. So... It's actually a pretty decent thing that she's not killing everybody. I'm going to try to give Dew a little bit of experience here every now and again. Um, these guys, similarly to the bandits from when we were fighting the Marfa bandits, they can't really do much to you either anyway, so you're not really in too much danger of Dew being attacked and killed because they don't have any accuracy to be able to actually hit you in the first place. So, you know, you can take your time and feed do a kill or two if possible it, I don't I don't honestly foresee myself actually being able to get a unit down to just one HP since that's the um, oh he got a point of skill that's awesome um, getting a unit down to one HP at this point because that's the minimum that you have to have it in order for do to get a kill since that's the minimum amount of damage that you can do in this game so that's just kind of annoying but yeah I'm gonna just keep Ira going through to this choke point I'm actually going to try to kill this guy. Yeah, hopefully Quan will kill this guy with the javelin. Might have actually been smarter to use the steel lance if I miss. Yep, that just happened. <laughs> of course it did. Um, that's okay. And there is something special that happens with Lex in this chapter too. So, got lots of fun things that can be happening here. Um, I'm actually going to leave that guy here because I don't want to give Yamka too many too many shots at Ira prior to us being ready to have Ideen move in there on her own turn. Although I think he's going to get a shot at her now. But like I said, Ira's a good candidate to hold off this choke point because of her high avoid. So she should be able to evade most of the damage. Oh, he's going to get a direct shot at her. That's crap. <laughs> She should be able to hold off for two turns, hopefully. If not, then... We're going to have some resetting to do. <laughs> I actually did a little pre-playing just to see if I could do this, and I didn't have too much trouble. I got—I think I got Yamka on my first try. So, hopefully Ira will be able to hang in there. She should be okay. He'll only be able to get two shots on her. Hopefully he doesn't land both of them. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be terrible. Alright, he misses one, that's good. Misses both, that's even better. Alright. So, like I said, Ira's a great candidate, and you just saw why. Um, but, we need to get Ideen in there as soon as possible. While at the same time, making sure that, uh, that we're not going to accidentally put some people in the wrong spot. 
I think... I wish I could kill this guy from range. If I kill this guy from range, that'll be... That'll put me in a better position, because... I can move Ira up one, and I don't think Yamka will move any closer. So that'll actually be a better... A better situation for us. I don't know if... Alright, I think Finn has just enough accuracy to... Hit this guy from range. Perfect. I've always had a little bit better time attacking from range with Finn than I have with Quan. I don't know if there's a disparity in their skill. No, it's the same. I don't know. But I'm going to move Ira up here. And that way, Yamka, I don't think he's going to move back to attack us. He may, but I don't think that he will. And so I'm not going to put anybody here or here. I'm just going to leave those areas that are that are available open for that very reason. And maybe I'll be able to snag Madeira kill here. Alright, he's doing 26 damage. 94% chance to, to hit this guy. If he doesn't miss, then we'll be in good shape. Those other bandits are going to trickle down through, the, through those side trees, so you just need to be careful that you don't put anybody that is vulnerable there. And then, once you're ready, and you've gotten Yamka on your team, make sure that you have Sigurd at the front of your squad, because... If you remember, there was that woman in the forest, Deidre, who said that she would that she was essentially not allowed. Well, that older guy told us that she was not allowed to be around any men in the forest, and that Sigurd was madly in love with her. And so, who better than to get her to see than Sigurd? So you have to throw him up there first, and if you don't, then you won't be able to get her. So I recommend doing that. Now, I think we're in good shape here. I don't think he'll attack Lady Idine. He might. I don't think that he will. I hope not. Because we, we're currently... Actually, here, let's do this instead. Um, she's one spot too far down. So I'm just going to move her here. And that should give her... The ability to move... In range this turn. Alright. Now the plan should work. Ira is a great block, and these guys are just going to come down and suicide themselves on our units. I think, or not, that's fine, if they don't, I'm just going to kill them the next turn. So that works well. So we're going to move Ira down, like I said. Actually, let's move her over. I'd like to have her as a, a bit of a block. And now, we can recruit Prince Yamka. See, I told you guys, Santorum, evil guy. Speak with the king who is not alive. <laughs> Please, Yomka, listen to reason. Yes, I will immediately do that. You know, I have to... Yeah. You don't have to put a finger on him because you can just kill him with magic. Alright, and with that, Prince Yamka is on our team. And unfortunately, I don't think I can actually... Yeah, I'm just going to throw Sigurd in there for now. Um, just have him kill this guy really quick. Sigurd needs to be at the front of your army anyway to have the next event happen. Alright, he leaves that guy alive anyway. That's fine, whatever. I just wanted to... I didn't want to leave Lady Idine up there, although I don't think that it would be... It would be next to impossible for her to get hit based on her high evasion as well. And because we're in the forest anyway, so everybody gets the 20% boost. Which, I mean, these axe fighters are going to have a miserable time trying to hit you. At this point in the, in the chapter is actually a really good time to train Ira. So, I recommend doing that. She's a good unit. And, you know, there's axe fighters aplenty, so... Wouldn't hurt to throw a few at her. Unfortunately, though, you can't go up into those discolored trees, so that kind of makes things a little difficult in trying to, you know, move ahead. But usually, like this, they'll come to you, and then you can just have at them. And I've yet to see any of these guys ever actually hit her in, like, the, the half an hour that I did a little bit of practicing on before this. So... 
you know. As you can see, she is the prototypical Myrmidon. Pretty great. I like sword fighters anyway, they're fun to use. I think I think the Myrmidons Myrmidons and Mercenaries, I don't there I don't think there's a distinction between the two in this game. But they've gotta be some of my favorite units. But let's go ahead and give Yamka his very first kill. Let's check out that killer bow. I'm actually gonna probably wind up trading that to Medir. Hopefully there is a a bow replacement in the town shop, whatever you want to call it. So that way I can just I can just pawn off Yamka's killer bow. Give it to Medir. Because Medir does need a little bit of help in in that department. And I'm planning on I have bigger plans for Medir than I do have for Yamka anyway. Since Yamka is paired with Ideen. So that's how things are gonna be. Whether you like it or not, fan base. But anyway. Gonna get a level up here. See what we get. Oh man. Sigur getting a bad level up? That's weird. Whatever. Um But yeah. If you move Sigurd up first, this is what happens. We meet Deidre in the Spirit Force. And this is actually really important that you that you have this um, discussion take place because it's it explains a game mechanic. She explains how a silent staff works, you know. And literally with that, the two gained 490 lover points, okay? So at this juncture, they're essentially lovers until the next turn, like I said. Uh, two units next to one another will gain between 5 and 10 points. There's a way to exploit that, but it's just really complicated. It has to do with, like, placing two females next to one male character in absorbing the bonus from one and giving it double to the other. I don't know. It's really confusing. But um, because you put these two next to one another, they're obviously going to get support points. And they start out with 490 lover points. They get 10 on the next turn, therefore making it literally impossible for the two of them not to become lovers instantly. I think I can show that now. I'm actually going to go and forgot to do the showing off Yamka. Let's go ahead and look at him for a minute. Uh, this is Yamka. He's the prince of Verdane, I think. That, no. What am I saying? I'm having a brain fart. Whatever. He's the prince, and um, he's got a killer bow, which is awesome. has the critical thing to it automatically. You don't have to go through 50 kills. It already has it. He's got pretty decent stats. Not too shabby. He's level 6. He's got an A in bows. He's got pursuit, adept, and duel, which are nice. And unfortunately, he doesn't have any holy blood to pass down. So that's Yamka. I'm going to give him another kill right here because I feel like it. And then I might just kill that other guy with Deidre. And he'll just keep doing this as long as is necessary. Although I haven't seen him critical once since I've had him in the practice run or this one so far. So that kind of sucks. But I'm going to use Deidre to kill this guy. Let's take out Deidre real quick. Uh, she's a shaman, level 3. Got an outrageously high magic stat, but her magic growths are pretty low. And, I mean, that's okay, because she's boosted by her good bases. She has a silent staff, which has a range of 10, and it prevents a magic user from using their magic, as long as your magic is higher than their resistance. She's got a circlet, which gives her miracle and renewal, so she'll heal a little bit HP every turn, and if she gets below half health, she'll be better at avoiding attacks. And finally, she's got aura which is the second strongest magic tome in the game. It's got a might of 20, okay, and it's strong against the anima elements for magic. She can't double attack because she doesn't have pursuit, so she's just going to be able to do one really, really strong magic attack every turn. That's pretty much all she can do. I don't know if she can kill this guy. No, she can't. Um...
I don't even think this guy would be able to kill her even if he could. Whatever, I'm just gonna let her attack for fun. So... That's pretty cool. She just did 33 damage in one attack though. So like I said, she is pretty darn strong. And as you'll soon see, she's a good candidate for killing Sandima. But we'll get to that later. There's actually one last thing that I want to show off in this video before we conclude. It's a special thing that is for Lex only. And I think it's pretty neat. Yeah, so she dodges the crap of this guy and is just going to blast him into oblivion. With aura. Which is cool. It's recommended that you give her some, some levels as well. I mean, you should try to train everybody, but she's an extraordinarily good unit. And... She's very beneficial. She's one of your best magic users, as you can tell. Now, there's one last thing that I want to do, and it's for Lex. So, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to keep shuffling people around. That's the only thing that's annoying about this part of the game, is that it's just literally shuffling everybody up into these available spots until you can get everybody out of this forest. So, that's... I, I just hate... It's basically kind of like using a mounted unit in any of the desert chapters in the other Fire Emblems. And, I mean, in case you guys are wondering, there is a desert chapter in this game, of course. This wouldn't be a Fire Emblem without one. So, there's that. I'm just going to keep trying to get everybody up and out of this crappy little choke point. Trying to move up people as much as possible. Unfortunately, I can't... I get stuck there because my units don't have high enough move to get through there. Ugh, this is just... I feel like I'm playing Tetris here. Really crappy, really crappy Tetris. No, I don't... <laughs> Ugh, menu system, stop! Alright. We're almost to what I want to do. It's actually probably going to take a couple more turns. The guys from up there at Verdane aren't going to come after you, thankfully. So, you got a bit of free reign to fool around. I'm going to send Lex all the way over here to this peninsula to the right. And you'll see why in a moment. I don't want to spoil it but something special will happen and this is something that a lot of people don't know and I obviously would never have known this because I've never played this game before um, I did have to do a little bit of research to figure this out but something special will happen for Lex if you move him there and it makes it takes Lex from being maybe a high B list to it to maybe a low A list character to literally the top of your A list you'll see why in a moment well, actually, in two moments, because I'm going to have to... I don't think he has enough move to get over there in this turn, so we're going to have to wait one more turn. Maybe two more turns, even after that. Ugh, I'm sorry, guys. But, because this isn't even exciting to watch. Um, I know that, so I'm just going to try to... keep things going as smoothly as possible. At least we got a lot of content in this episode, if that matters. Um... So, we're probably going to wind up killing Sandima with with Deidre, because she's got high enough magic. She is able to silence him, so he won't be able to attack you. I mean, it kind of makes the boss battle cheap, if you think about it, because he can't counterattack. But at the same time, if he could, he would kill you. Because, as we'll see next time when I show you that boss battle, his magic stat is through the roof, and he's got a magic ring which, if you kill him, you will get to take advantage of. So, we'll be doing that. Alright, and then, because there's a bunch of archers up here that we're going to want to, we're going to want to come, come down and attack guys. And that castle even looks like the castle on the front of Tetris. It's like this game is mocking me. Alright, come on. I just want to show off the little Lex thing, and then we can be on our merry way. Alright, here we go. And if you don't have the Iron Axe, this conversation will never happen. That's why I told you to keep it. And this is a, a reference to Aesop's fables with the Lady of the Lake. I guess there was a guy who dropped his axe in there and he was prefaced by this woman with either having dropped a gold or a silver one. And in that version he gets both, but this one's a little different. So, that woman gives us the Brave Axe. Now, 
You will never, ever, ever have trouble having Lex double attack. He gets two attacks every single turn, even though he doesn't have Pursuit. And Lex has super, super good strength and defense for a unit of his caliber. And just became one of our top A-lister units. Alright guys, next time we're going to take on Verdane and Silent Sandima. I've been an HSDL6. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.